Over the past 40 years, fighting games haven't really changed all that much. The formula created and perfected by games like Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom, and Tekken are the templates that most fighting games today continue to follow. In 2017, a game released that had a completely new take on what fighting games could be. Using knights, samurai, monks, and vikings, this game was reminiscent of the TV show Deadliest Warrior and put the debate of who would win in a fight in the hands of millions of players. Medieval combat, brutal combos, and a new direction for fighting games, this is For Honor. For Honor is a fantasy historical fighting game developed by Ubisoft for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Originally released in 2017, the game was hailed for its unique combat and inclusion of fighters based on historical warfare. For those who have never seen or played For Honor, here's a little taste of some good old-fashioned medieval combat. So it kind of looks like Soul Calibur or Tekken or any number of 3D fighting games, but when it comes to actual gameplay, it's completely unique. Most of the combat in For Honor is visual. Rather than just holding a button to block an attack, players must watch their opponent's stance and how they swing their weapon, correctly identify the direction an attack is coming from, and counter that move accordingly. On its surface, For Honor seems pretty simple, but the game has a wealth of mechanics which accelerate and complicate the game immensely. For instance, on offense, players don't have to commit to a swing. They can feint an attack, meaning that if you block the way you think they're swinging, you'll be left wide open for an attack from another direction. On top of this, there are a number of different characters, all with their own weapons and playstyles, so not only do you have to know how your character works, but how every other character in the game works as well. For Honor is a hybrid fighting slash MOBA game. It's a melee based combat game that has a very unique fighting system, whereas you can take particular stances uh, with your ability to guard and attack. Uh, and depending on those stances, you're able to either attack your opponent and land the attack or successfully depend on an attack. And depending on which character you pick, uh, not only will you have a completely different move set, a completely different way of fighting, handling fights, uh, but you bring different playstyles to your team, different roles to your team. From the 12 characters that originally comprised the For Honor roster, that has grown to 29 today, meaning that there are a slew of new playstyles and new matchups to learn. But despite such a variety of different ways to play the game, For Honor is often seen as a slow game bordering on boring. Part of the reason that the game was so slow at the beginning is that almost every attack in the game could be countered on reaction. I mean, simply the, the speed of a lot of the attacks in the game. Uh, when the game first came out, attacks were slow. People got very used to that over time and For Honor became known very early on as having a very defensive meta. The commonly accepted strap in competitive play was called don't press buttons. If you're pressing buttons, you're probably making a mistake, unless you were just really making a great play. As time passed and people got better setups or got better at reacting, the devs actually had to increase the speed of the attacks by a considerable amount just so that people were encouraged, incentivized to actually do anything. Because top players were so good at reacting to moves and picking the correct option to beat them, Ubisoft was forced to release the CCU, a blanket update that increased the overall speed of the game by a lot and that made all attacks considerably faster, but also introduced a, a hidden indicator variable. Basically, the attack is, it indicator is present for a shorter amount of time, uh, so you have less time to react to the attack. As the game started to become more popular, the best players were those who mastered the game's advanced techniques. The earliest example of this was called the unlock tech. The game's code is all jumbled and there's things that are causing certain inputs to be read over certain inputs if you time them correctly. Uh, now there was a way to circumvent the ability to parry attack, which is huge in For Honor. Uh, and that was by unlocking your character while doing an attack using a specific input. And it caused the attack to become unparryable. So if the person didn't know the attack was unlocked, they could try to parry it and they would eat the attack 100% of the time. 
Going into a Ubisoft sponsored 1v1 tournament, this exploit was used all the way into Grand Finals, where the eventual winner took full advantage of this technique. No one will argue that, but when these attacks are unlocked like that zone right there, it, it takes that ability away. It does. I was stamina, a, a learner can find himself in a dangerous spot. While the unlock tech has been removed from the game, today, the most prevalent advanced technique is known as the option select. Option selects exist in pretty much all fighting games, but it's cranked up to 11 in For Honor. Whereas in regular For Honor matches, there's a pretty basic RPS of block beats attack, feint beats block, and attack beats feint, option selects allow players to forego any sort of guesswork and cover multiple options with a single move. Some of the community knew about them, very, very few select members, and I'm saying like probably less than 15, 20 members of the community knew about them, and then eventually got posted on Reddit by Italian players, and then everybody started learning about different OSs that could beat different mix-ups and can be used to create a mix-up on top of a mix-up, which led to another mix-up, and it, it just kind of made the game, like I said, a little bit more defensive. Unfortunately, the game had a pretty rocky start. On release, the servers were a mess, and for those lucky enough to actually get into a game, matches were laggy and borderline unplayable. For a fighting game based on watching and reacting to your opponent's attacks, lag is simply unacceptable. On top of poor online infrastructure, For Honor was also incredibly unbalanced. Certain heroes were completely overpowered, with several infinites and other broken mechanics making it an unfun experience for newer players. Although For Honor's start was less than stellar, over the weeks and months following, Ubisoft kept working to fix the problems that plagued their new title. They launched dedicated servers to resolve laggy gameplay, patched out infinites and balanced heroes, and even released the For Honor Starter Edition, a $15 version of the game that featured a limited roster. In the wake of the release of the Starter Edition in 2018, For Honor saw 200,000 unique players in just 24 hours. But a successful casual game does not make a successful esports title. Fortunately, there were those behind the scenes, as well as those at Ubisoft, who were willing to pour time and money into making competitive For Honor a real thing. At the beginning, much of the community was grassroots. When the game's competitive scene was first cropping up, Discord servers were where most players went to scratch that competitive itch. The first two online communities to really make a name for themselves were For Glory and For Honor Legends. And this is how things were for quite a while. But heading into year four, Ubisoft started to take a real interest in competitive For Honor and began working with community TOs to create a competitive and sustainable esports environment. One of the first big crossover events was the Spectator Mode Tournament series, which was a series of six tournaments run by organizers in the community with prize pools of 1.5 million steel For Honor's in-game currency put up by Ubisoft themselves. This led into the Ubisoft-sponsored Dominion series, where Ubisoft put up 48 grand in cold hard cash to be taken home by competitors. Speaking of Dominion, now might be a good time to bring up the most popular game mode in For Honor. When people think of For Honor, they think of 1v1 or 2v2 battles between knights and samurai, where when one is killed, the round is over. And while this is certainly true of one tournament format, duels are just a distilled version of a much bigger tactical game mode known as Dominion. Similar to Domination in Call of Duty or Conquest from Battlefield, players, in teams of four, generate score by killing NPCs, defeating enemy players, and holding zones scattered around the map. The game type is built around teamwork and strategy, and is much more than just who can win a straight up fight. Pretty quickly, the depth and difficulty associated with Dominion attracted the game's best players, and a few teams rose up to become absolutely dominant in their respective regions. Remember the spectator mode tournaments we talked about earlier? Every single tournament in that series was won by one single team, UDDA. And for years, UDDA had been the premier team in Europe, winning virtually every event they entered. For Honor is just getting started. Recently, on their public test servers, Ubisoft put out an update which essentially removed all option selects from the game. One of the biggest staples of the current competitive meta, and one of the reasons the game is so slow, is being patched out altogether, in an effort to promote faster paced gameplay and a purer For Honor experience. What this means for the competitive scene is uncertain, but now is probably a better time than ever to try your hand at this medieval fighting game. If I had to give any reason out there to play For Honor, it would just be one. A single reason. It's unique. There's no other game like it. When people ask me to describe the game, what kind of game is it? 
well, it's a fighting game, but it's also like a MOBA, but it also has shooter elements, but it's also like this and that. For Honor's combat system is so unique that I recommend at least trying it one time just to see the masterpiece that Ubisoft has created, the honestly overlooked masterpiece that Ubisoft Montreal's created. The game at its highest level is so interesting that I urge you know anybody watching to at least watch one tournament and see for yourself, you know, just how complex foreign can be at its highest level because it gets really complex, really interesting, and honestly really fascinating. Thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on For Honor? Do you think more developers should start experimenting with different game modes and mechanics in fighting games? Which historical class do you want to see added to For Honor next? Let us know in the comments below. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason, B, Brendan, QB, David, Foxy, Iron, Lyra, Mauve, Nate, Sierra, Shampoo, Weibo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, Marco, Mookie, and Oriorial for being Diamond supporters. We'd also like to extend an extra, extra special shout out to Fool from The Art of Warfare for being our Grandmaster supporter. Thank you all for your continued support. If you also want to support our channel and unlock perks, check out the Patreon link in the description below or join our Discord server. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.